My friends, have you ever pondered what's on the other side of these vents in GoldenEye's facility stage? Or what would happen if you could jump up the entire silo mission in one fell swoop? Or could Xenia actually really be on Frigate after all these years? Well, maybe not that last one, but I actually did discover a new secret door on Frigate thanks to exploring Goldeneye with the Moon Jump Game Shark codes. And I discovered actually a fair bit of new knowledge in this game by Moon Jumping after nearly 30 years. So today we'll be exploring some Goldeneye levels with Moon Jumping, seeing things that I guarantee you've never seen before, starting with something we've all pondered, the other side of these facility vents. So get comfy, and let's get into it. So I've cleared out a lot of the facility stage to facilitate this exploration. But what you have to do is change heights. So like go downstairs or jump off of an area if you can. Those areas are few and far between the game. And then you press B to moon jump. That's how this game shark code works. But I can't pass through walls while moon jumping. I can only pass through doorways and only if they're open. And you can see it's actually kind of hard to control this because you are really rising or falling quite fast. But if I open both these doors and press B to moon jump, I can pass my way through these halls and get over here. And uh, well, I forgot about this door, but maybe the toilet will actually work to moon jump. Maybe falling off the toilet, I can. Yes, there we go. Okay, so we're going to get back up into the vents. And hey, now look, you can pretty much see what is over on the other side of the vents. Now, I cannot travel there. I'm holding straight strafe, you know, strafing forward, and it is not letting me go through. Like, there's like an invisible wall preventing me from going any further. But we do get this perspective from up high in the sky showing a few more steps of area. And it looks like there might be something over towards the right there. If I strafe left and right, we can see a little bit. It actually looks like it goes down. You know, it looks like it declines in um, in height. There's like a tunnel downwards there. But we can actually look a little bit deeper if I let myself fall back down. You can see there's like a, a, a point where the vent drops down there. But if we go around here and out back, you know, you could always go here. There's an outlet upstairs and there's this, you know, grate that prevents us from going down there, which is kind of interesting. But if I get the moon jump property back, I will rise through the ceiling here and we can get a, another look at this area. So here we are, I have to travel up and around and now we are as close to the other side of the facility vents as we'll ever get. And I fell there, but you know what? We can screenshot some of this uh, to really examine what's going on. And one thing that you kind of notice, is this this strange alteration height and levels of these areas you can see that one area is a huge pit going all the way down there's obviously like nothing loaded down there and i'm doing my best to keep myself hovering with the b to moon jump and r aimer which is no easy task because this look right here is going to be the absolute best look you're going to get moon jumping on facility and you know this peak at the vents you know it's always blocked up by the grate but we're looking as far down the vent as we possibly can. I'm fully strafing into the grate. I'm fully strafing over here, looking with the R aimer, and there's, uh, hey, there's just no, nothing else to it, you know? Now this sort of vent on the left that we see coming up, it's interesting that that comes up, like that's kind of made for no reason. Almost makes me wonder if there was gonna be a second sort of uh, entrance to the stage or something, that's kind of what it looks like. Here's another, outlet up or maybe just a piece of architecture you know, if I let myself fall down we're in the vents and we strafe through you go whoa you know there's an outlet up same thing over here and just kind of adds to the ambiance of the stage but hey there's nothing there you know as as a young child playing this game for the first time you think oh I wish I could cross the vents there must be some way to get there and you hope that maybe that vent downwards leads to like a whole new level, you know, somewhere else in the game. You think, oh, it's, it leads somewhere over here on the other side of this toilets. You know, where could it be? And the reality is just that, you know, there is nothing there. Nothing was ever programmed or built into the game. 
And it's one of those things that, you know, as you get older and, and learn the truth, it, it in a way becomes less cool, but in a way kind of becomes cool learning what is actually there. And so, hey, that is our best look at what's on the other side of facility vents. Now on facility, there's another cool thing we can look at, and it is the famous beakers on a vent over here. And once you start moon jumping, I guess your Z position gets kind of messed up and you can really start like traveling throughout the stage and sometimes they'll just launch you in the air, um, you know, seemingly randomly. But if we go over here, we can see that there's these beakers here and it, they look to be built on fully structured vents. And of course, once again, as a young lad, you're thinking, you know, oh, can I travel in those vents? Could they be secretly connected? to the ones in the bathroom, you know, what's going on? Could I ever get there and explore and, and visit these mysterious beakers? Well, thanks to this moon jump code, we can. And so let's head over there. I, I had to open the doors first to allow myself safe passage through. Okay, so I will like screen shot and, and pause screen to get a better look at some of these. You can see four beakers and it's actually very flat architecture. Like the vents are not fully built. They're pretty well rendered from your position on the ground, but they're really not that well built. Um, you know, they're not certainly loaded from above. There's no texture from above because of course, the game never anticipated that you would be able to see them from above. And we can see actually on all three sides where this sort of vent, oh, I walked through a door there, where the vent sort of passes through or at least I passed through a hallway there is where, where I moved away. You know, these two sort of windows and another window. You know, not really a window because if we go to the ground, it'll look like, you know, that's where the vent goes through, right? And the beakers are fully interactable. I'll shoot one of the small ones here, maybe. See, and they, they break and they blow up, which is cool. The same way that they do, you know, over here, these beakers. But we'll get back up one last time and try to interact with them while floating if we can, which might be cool. All right, so we're back in the beaker area and, uh, oh, it looked like actually the vent kind of blocked my shot from that side. So once again, I guess my shots, something was preventing me from shooting through there, whether it was uh, a false wall or some kind of, uh, just, just the other side of the unrendered vent texture. And then I was getting stuck on a door, but let's move on in. From this side, I, I should be able to shoot the uh, beakers from this side of the... Well, we fell again. You know, I'm probably shooting through the roof here, and that's why it's not allowing me to actually hit the beakers. And so hitting the beakers while flying, there you can see all these shots had land in the roof would actually be pretty tough. It would take quite some precise hovering and movement to get yourself floating at just the right height to uh, avoid the roof or the other side of the vents. And so, hey, you try it yourself. I'll leave the game shark codes in the description, but it's, it's not the easiest thing to handle. I'd love to see someone take out the beakers while floating in air. That'd be a great challenge to leave you on. And we'll leave facility now because there is a lot more to explore and show you all. Silo is a really interesting stage because, you know, years ago I pondered, what if one could warp up the silo? There's kind of four floors on the silo. You start on floor one and you run up the, the stage through these sort of main rooms and eventually get to the top fourth floor where you run past Ormov to the end. Obviously, if there was some kind of wrong warp, up warp, this would save immense time in speedrunning. Could such a thing be possible? And I found out through this, probably not. So let's go back into the first room. Okay, here we are. And let's run up and jump up to the top floor, which we're on now. Okay, so here's a door. If I let go on this catwalk, I just fall right through, which is pretty disappointing, you know, like you would hope that there might be a way even on this higher floor. So this is the top floor and we're just falling right through the catwalk. There's no, there's no way to make it solid. And so I imagine that the collision on the catwalks must not be fully rendered, you know, 
only on the floor that you are on is it rendered. Okay, we got that guard, good. So, here's the thing. You can open the door though, as I just did. And if we peek in, you can see that is actually the room where Ormov is standing. Which is really insane because like, you could in theory get to the end of the stage that easily just fly, you know, if a wrong warp was possible, you could just wrong warp right up here, get to the end of the stage, and beat the beat the level in, like, 20 seconds, something like that. You know, where the world record's been around a minute for the past, you know, 20 years. But here's the thing. Even if the door's open, you cannot go through it. Okay, door's open. I'm strafing through where, like, I should be able to go through it, even at this elevated height, and I'm not going through it. And further to that, I actually activated on walkthrough doors to begin with. I've tested this both with walkthrough doors and without. And in no circumstance can you get through this door at the top of the level, you know, having started on the first floor. And so it's kind of unfortunate that this, you know, theoretical imagined strategy, if we could find a way to wrong warp up the silo, saving like a minute worth of time pretty much, um, it's just an imagined strategy and there's no actual way to do it, you know. You cannot get through no matter what. I'm well above the door, it's open, strafing through, I should strafe through it, and you're just not going through. And once again, to, to show you, like, if I strafe well above this door and walk through, I will just walk through it, you know, so... Because that's how it kind of renders... See, I can move in and out of here because that door is open and the game is registering that the door is open and, and the room is loaded. But when I fall back down, I'll be on the first floor. And so for some reason, you know, you wouldn't expect the game to know these things. You would expect the game to think, well, there's a door there and you're trying to go through it, so let's go through it. But no, the game knows to shut you out and not to let you pass through that door because my Z position is clearly sort of locked in a way to the floor where I began my moon jump. And I don't think that's ever been tested before in this game. And so it is actually really good to test and sort of have a definitive conclusion on, you know, could there be a way to, I mean, for one, there'd have to be a way to figure out how to uh, wrong warp up four floors in GoldenEye, which is, which is a tall task. And for two, there'd have to be a way to change your Z position. So, you know, could this happen? Probably not. Okay, so here we are on Frigate approaching the engine room. And this is honestly, I think this is a pretty big discovery because I don't think anyone has ever seen this before or documented this, and if so, not in a very wide location. But if we moon jump right here, there's a door. Look, there's straight up another secret door. And I opened it, like you could see it get opened. I don't have walkthrough doors on right now, but we can moon jump, then there's fully a bonus door up there. And if we go up to where I just was, like, there's no door here on this level. Like, that is a new secret door, you know. And of course, you can do this trick without moon jumping. If we just crouch with Tiny Bond on, we'll walk over through that wall and we'll see two sets of secret doors over there. I'll insert a clip. I've talked about that, you know, many, many times throughout my uh, numerous videos. But so we've known of two secret doors on the stage before, and those doors you could open and interact with, and that's pretty cool. But as far as I know, no one has ever discovered or documented this secret door down here. It is above this room where there's hostages, and there I, I opened and closing it. Like, it, I'm actually kind of shocked and you know, I, I'm certainly stunned. I believe this to be a new discovery. If someone else had previously discovered it, all the credit to them, but certainly, um, you know, it was probably shared on a, you know, niche, respectable, but niche in ancient text sort of website. You, know, you see this meme now, you know, we're losing the ancient texts. And maybe that's the case here. Maybe we're losing the ancient text of this door. But as far as I know, here's, uh, here it is. And I'm just shocked and stunned because it's literally right up there 
And if we go up there, it should be somewhere like around here. And there's clearly no door here. And even if we compare to the tiny bond doors, those are one level up. Like, those are on a level above this level. And that's just one of the first things I've seen. And, like, how many more doors can there be on this stage? You know, this is not the door we're looking at, clearly. Like, that one is over to the right. You know, that one's over there. And, and we were over here, you know. So that's clearly not that door. But there is something else notable if I walk through that door that we kind of see, which is kind of cool. You, know, you want to make sure that the door cycle stays open for you to look at. So if we walk over here and we get into this room... We can see we're in this room that has a pillar. But because the pillar obviously goes into the ceiling, it never needed to render a top of the pillar. And so we can just see through into the awaiting skybox below into the void. You know, because of course, why would it need a top? And that's kind of a cool sight. One of those weird things you notice when exploring this way. If I let myself fall down, yeah, I fall down and I'm now beside the pillar and we were looking down the top of it there. And so that's pretty cool. There's an invisible body armor there, just FYI if you didn't know that. Pro game hacks. Now, another cool thing on Frigate is just the idea of like what it looks like above the Frigate. You know, when I was a young lad playing the game, you thought, oh, what could be up there? Like, what if I could run around on top of the Frigate? You know, there's no way I know how to get up there, but what if? Surely it must be solid, and surely I must be able to actually run around there. And the unfortunate reality is, no, it is obviously just void space. There is stuff loaded that you see from below, and even you get these sorts of weird, like, disappearing glitchy moments where the stuff isn't getting loaded. But for the most part, you know, these sort of antenna structures and upright, you know, chimney structures are there, satellites and so on. But other you know, you imagine it being a similar surface to this that you could run around on and get to. And hey, maybe that's where the cut Xenia fight was. You know, the one that's referenced in the, uh, whatever you call it, the, the data, the briefing of the mission. Um, but no, there's nothing up there. And look, I'm in the hallway. I'm in like the first hallway you go in on the level. And it's not even loading the outside of the stage. Obviously, it must be programmed to just not load the outside of the stage when you are inside the frigate which again like it sounds obvious when you mention it but when you see it so vividly it's it's really weird and look like these these structures are solid the shots are landing it in them but the second we go inside they vanish and that's like obviously good programming especially for 997 it's kind of amazing to think about but it's just kind of unsettling and shocking to see. And hey, one can only ponder how many more secret doors are on Frigate, why they're on Frigate. This gives you a good view of how, like, you can shoot through this area. And that explains why the 2.3 strategy works uh, on Frigate Agent, the one used by the notorious Rebecca Smiths for Frigate 21. Because you can shoot right through and you can free a hostage in the opening cutscene and all that kind of stuff. But hey, if you don't know that story, I'll leave it in an end card or something. Uh, many frigate stories to be had. And hey, I'll just take in the view, bouncing up and down, moon jumping at the front of frigate. Take it all in as we move on to the next stage. So here's one bonus thing to show you all in facility. This lettering here in Cyrillic, with an arrow pointed to these tubes, seems to say vodka, according to the translation. This is obviously just a joke put in there by some developers who thought it'd be kind of funny, and it is, because obviously we're in a, you know, chemical facility, um, not a distillery. And so presumably some, you know, nerve gas or some not very good things are being pumped through these pumps. Um, but the game says it's vodka, which is pretty funny. And wow, look at this above view of the pipes. Probably never seen before, or at least never seen by very many. 
the above pipes view. Very odd, very unusual, and what a way to move on. So Dam is a really good one for this moon jumping. Obviously it's the first stage, a very basic stage, and it can give us a good basic understanding on how this moon jumping works. A lot of the stages I had a hard time with crashing or sometimes you permanently moon jump to the sky and like it doesn't ever let you fall back down. But we can see Dam here, I can like walk through the stage, you know, I can walk through the tunnel and we see the various rooms of the tunnel load. And I can follow only the, you know, way the tunnel goes. I'm fully on the right side of the tunnel strafing into the wall here. And even though I'm above the wall, above the tunnel, I can't strafe any further into there. I can only follow the path of the stage. Now, interestingly, I've like never looked up here, but there is a sort of gap in the tunnel where I guess there's open sky. I'll take that opportunity to fall down and, and look. I mean, you know, I've, I've been playing this game for 25, 30 years and I never noticed that. That's kind of funny. And if I get airborne again, obviously the, the truck is solid. So let's get airborne again and uh, again fall off an object and press B. And I'm sort of like on top of the truck, but I can't really interact with it that well. If I had walk through doors on, I could kind of land inside of it. But I don't in this current moment. And as we see, the door blocks us. I'm fully strafing into the door. I also can't strafe on top of the truck, and so I just kind of have to fall down here to move on. So now we're in this area of the dam with the, you know, satellite dish and little outbuilding. And so if we strafe over here, because there's a door here, we can get on top of this first part of this roof. But then there's a door here and a wall, and so I can't strafe any further into it. This is still pretty cool because we get on top of this sort of, uh, what would you even call it? I want to say a lean-to or just a, a terraced structure. And, uh a covered roof area and this is probably the closest view we can get of the satellite dish which is pretty cool but we can't move any further in now we actually might be able to I fall through the ceiling here and open this door now this door closes pretty quickly but let's see if we can get airborne oh we might be able to get airborne off that grate and uh then we'll be like inside there we go so we're inside the building and i guess if i go here okay so now because the game thinks we're inside the building it's not showing us the roof you know so that in itself is pretty odd there's a little window or is that the alarm that's loaded down there let's see if i can shoot it I, I think it's just a window yeah so there's the structure of the window there's the little door area and for now i'm kind of stuck up here you can see some of the texture of the roof trying to poke through there, which is pretty strange. But it's not letting me pass through because none of the doors are open. Like, if I had walked through doors on, I could probably transition through this area a little differently. And maybe we'll explore into that somewhat as well at another time. There we go. So the door was open and we can see it moving back. There we go. Look at that. That's beautiful. Moving in and out of there with that door being open. So really weird, weird stuff, you know? Cabrera, once again, you can see down into the basement below. Now, there's something that seems obvious to try, and I don't know if I'll be able to even do it, but let's say I can get airborne down there with the covered modem and uh, raise myself up and then throw it, you know, while I'm up there into the you know where it belongs on the screen there i wonder what sort of the hit boxing of the cover modem will be like in that situation so let's get down to that area and find out okay so i, I want to jump up there and try to throw the cover modem on the wall and see what happens thankfully i can uh, it's working but look it, it's not even loading this area oh there we kind of had some sort of moment where the dam was loaded it might have just been an angle thing we might have to be right in the window oh my god i'm jumping up and down through the thing this is insane that was really remarkable i want to try it once without the modem out and try to shoot some shots which i didn't get off there but 
I think the window actually might have sort of a unique hitbox to make this... this oh my god, it does! The window, like, totally has... Okay, let's throw the modem. And you can see them... Look at that. The modem landed on the floor there. It, it sort of got sucked into the chimney of this area. If you can imagine this window having an extended chimney all the way up, it sort of got sucked into that as opposed to falling naturally where you would think it would fall. So that's really odd. I'm just going to try to keep hovering here as long as I can. And uh, I, I, it's always been theorized, like, can you throw the modem from the basement up? Would it save time in a speed run? And it seems like there's sort of another level of difficulty. There may be architecture or structures that we don't fully understand yet at play here. And I like how there's this additional ledge that we're seeing. Like, you never notice this. You just think it kind of goes right into the mountain over here, you know? You don't spend too much time over here, but that's kind of interesting how it's really, like, squared off. I don't know. I find that really weird because I, I never really looked at it that way. And... If, it doesn't matter where I strafe left or right, it's like, the game considers me to be in this basement room right now. It does not consider me to be out here. Only when I'm directly above the chimney and able to fall in, is it sort of, you know, giving me that view of outside the dam. And so once again, and I mean, look at how, it, it's not loading anything that you wouldn't be able to see from the window. Even look at over there. It, it knows that that wall's blocking off this section here, and so it would never load that for you. And I mean, that must be a lot of thought that went into deciding what to render from that basement room. And I guess it kind of, kind of suggests that this basement room might cause a lot of lag, you know, because you're rendering outside as well. When generally speaking in this game, you're usually only going to be rendering stuff in the room you're in. So right in that window spot might be a place to avoid if you want to reduce lag. Alright, so we're going to wrap up by looking here at Runway. And certainly, I've examined this building before, and it is very odd. Especially if you use the sniper rifle to zoom in, which I don't have right now. You do see the sort of different stages of these shapes that all come together to make up this building. And, you know, when you're on the ground floor, it looks fine. But once you're up there and zooming in, it can look very, very odd. And certainly, when we get airborne, we do also get... We, we see the oddness kind of take shape. And how these different things are placed differently. You know, what's up with these triangles? Uh, I don't even think you can really see them from the ground. You know, if I let myself fall back down. You know, where are the triangles? So that is really quite something strange and another cool thing we'll take a look at over here is if i moon jump and go over towards the tank you know a lot of people always thought oh this you know secret sort of concrete door over here it must lead back towards the end of the dam right that's kind of intuitive but you know lo and behold as we sort of you know grow up and examine these childhood myths with more advanced tools we can see like no there's there's nothing beyond it. There's nothing here. It, it's a void. And I'll try to fall back down a little bit slowly and get a decent look at it. And it just, it, it's just a concrete door in a little culvert in the mountain. And that's the reality. And, it, you know, in a, in a way it's kind of crushing to these, you know, myths and dreams you had back in the day. But on the other hand, it's, it is kind of cool to actually see what is really there, you know? So, hey, that's, uh, that's quite interesting. And yeah, I get way up on the mountain and, and so on and way up here and take a look at the entirety of the facility. You can see actually sort of the like draw horizon there uh, covering the top of the facility because it doesn't like want you seeing, you know, sort of beyond a certain horizon. This building is super, super weird. But... I think all things considered, that's going to do it for this video. I mean, there's so many more levels to explore. I certainly could explore the levels that we looked at way more in depth, as well as, you know, three quarters of the game remaining. But there's just too much to look at, so let me know if you enjoyed this video. I'll leave some more exploration videos in the end card, and uh, I would love to do it again if you would. So thanks for watching, my friends. Stay true, 
and I'll see you in another stream or video.